Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Yeah. So. What? How many love Jesus? How many can actually stay with me for 40 minutes and just watch me? You probably couldn't, huh? You know what? I, I, I brought this because I, I want to uh, I want to I want to remind you that as we started this new series called Thinkers, we're on uh, week number four, and I want to focus on us changing the way we think. Because if we can change the way we think, then we can change the way we live. And if we can change the way we live, then we can change the world. But what happens is, I think sometimes because life is good, careers are good, you have home, you have car, you have work. I think sometimes we can uh, say, well, I'm a faithful Christian. I go to church every weekend. And uh, you know what? I do my best. I do my part. Uh, but, but how many know that that's dangerous to come to the conclusion that I'm good? No one's good. God's good. Our job is to constantly be changing and reinventing ourselves in, in everything that God has called us to be. We should not be the same person that we were last year, this year, and we should not be the same person next year that we were this year in 2017 but but i want to take you through the scriptures tonight to show you how even god uh had had moments throughout scriptures where there was transition where there was change in the way things were done you see the gospel will always remain but the methods must change the gospel must be the anchor of your life but the method and how you reach has to change and uh, if you don't change you get left behind and so tonight, I brought this, oh my God, let me breathe now. I brought this little red nose um, because my first point is this, if you guys can put this up on the screens, is what you focus on expands. What you focus on expands. So think about this right now. What are you focused on? Every single one of you are focused on something, whether it's um, an issue at work, a challenge, whether it's a problem, <coughs> what you focus on, what you're focused on right now it continues to expand. You can be focused on amazing things as well, and guess what? And, and that's expanding right now. But how many know that when, when you focus on something for so long, like this nose, if I get this, you probably pay more attention to the red nose than you are me. Why? Because it's just like it sticks out. And when you're going through stuff, when challenges arise, it's so easy to focus solely on the issue, the problem, the challenge uh, that we're facing and not realizing that the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you think about the problem. And so if we can just change the way we perceive, then we can really begin to see that God can take the problem and do something amazing with it. So what you focus on expand. If you are focusing right now on lies, it's expanding. If you're focusing on insecurity, it's expanding. If you're focused on fear, that's expanding. If you're focused on negative thoughts, I don't have, I never will, I could never, it's expanding. Whatever you're focusing on right now is expanding. And then you ask yourself, why do I keep feeling the way I feel? And why do I keep behaving the way I behave? And it will always go back to the way you think. And so what do we do? Well, we have to start allowing God, we have to invite God to begin to confront those thoughts because the truth is this, is that we all want to find the next two step, three step, seven step, but the only way to renew a mind is only through God's word. There is no other way. The word of God is the only anchor. The word of God is the only truth that will combat every single lie that you are focused on right now. There is nothing on this earth that can help you the way God can help you and not only help you but transform you and change the situation. 
but we have to come back to that truth we must come back to that truth i remember one time i like fishing and uh, i was on this boat and uh and i threw my anchor on and, and i'm like fishing but i got so focused on my fishing that before i knew it man i drifted i'm like i didn't even know i drifted what happened well i started pulling up the chain the anchor was gone and it's like wow that's what happens to us in life that we can be so focused on a problem that you can be drifting from the truth of God because you get so intentional. I mean, you talk about an accidental life and an intentional life. Some of us, we may say that we're not that intentional in, in seeing the breakthrough and the victory of Jesus the way he wants us to see it, but either way, you're putting that effort into the negative thoughts, and it's, it's causing something. It's causing some damage. And so tonight, I want us to, to keep going on this on this idea of of changing the way we think and not focusing so much on the problem listen yesterday i got hit with a huge problem huge big that it irritated me and it has it has continued it has overflowed into my today as well and so it's challenging not to be focused on my problem. <laughs> and so, but I am now, you know, taking a scoop of my own medicine and saying, okay, Mauricio, the problem is not the problem. The problem is how you're going to think about this problem right now. Because if I can get a thought from heaven, if I can get an idea from heaven, I'm sure we can, we can solve this problem. It's not sin. Don't worry. It's not <laughs> nothing like that. You're like, oh, my God, what is he doing? No. No, it's something, it's something with, with our church, but it's a big problem. Don't get scared. It's going to be all handled. It's going to be taken care of, but, but, but here's the deal. I have to make sure that I also am not focused on the problem. What are, what's your problem right now? What are you thinking about? What have you been so focused on? What's been distracting you from God's divine plan for your life? What's What's, what's drawing the attention? What's sapping your strength? What's sapping your energy? What's, what's stealing your peace right now? Because the truth is this, it's not that the, it's not that the devil is, the devil is doing all, no, no, no. It's just that life will throw life at you and it comes to distract you, but we have to anchor on truth. And, and when, when the winds and the waves come, listen, I may move a little bit, shift, but boom, his, his anchor brings me right back. Amen. And so that's what we want to do. We need to get back to the truth because the truth, if we, if we meditate on the truth, we'll expand healing, we'll expand uh, victories, we'll expand span breakthroughs but we got to get back to the truth are you guys with me tonight a little foundation for tonight but we'll get into this right now all right here's another point write this down quickly what you think about is the direction you're going what you think about is the direction you're going right now what you're thinking about is the direction you're going right now so today i was thinking my problem <laughs> And I was going in the same direction today, but today, thank you, Jesus, I put the brakes on. And I stopped, and I, and I, had, I literally kneeled. I've been praying in the Holy Ghost uh, throughout today. I was in the back praying in the Holy Ghost, just praying in the Spirit, because here's the deal. There's only so much you can pray in English, and you run out of words, and you don't know what the heck to pray anymore. It's like I said, all the prayers, but when you pray in the Spirit, the Bible says that you pray the perfect prayer. And what you don't get, what you don't understand, the Holy Spirit will begin to interpret it for you. Now, do I have the full interpretation yet? Not yet, but let me tell you something. I feel a little bit stronger right now. You know what? I, it, my, did my problem change? But I changed. Yeah, I got a little bit more peace. I got, got a little bit more faith right now. Like, okay, this is going to turn around for some good. I don't know how, but I got I to gotta focus on what God's going to do out of this whole situation. So I'm telling you, the problem is not the problem. The problem is the way we think. And uh, so let's just start with this. I want to I wanna bring some, some understanding because sometimes we can get stuck in changing the way we think because we get so comfortable. Let's just take our salvation. Let's, let's, let's start with salvation because salvation is a whole package that God gives us. It's, it, it comes with healing. It comes with provision. It comes with security. It comes with identity. 
So salvation has, has, has many benefits. It's not just I'm saved, going to heaven, and I'm skipping hell. No, it, it comes with a package of blessings. Okay, but, but, but check this out. So in Old Testament, let's just start with this. In Old Testament, um, the only way for there to be a remission of sins or forgiveness of sins, something had to be sacrificed. An animal had to be sacrificed, sacrificed by a priest who then would take the animal, sacrifice the animal, see the blood shed of the animal. The blood symbolized the forgiveness of our sins and the routine, the ritual, the religious thing that had to be done was an animal had to be sacrificed. Old Testament, and that was the only way to receive the forgiveness of our sins. New Testament, (laughs) now we have Jesus. So God said, this was the way we dealt with it then, Old Testament, This is the way we deal with it. Now, there was a shift. There was a change of the way God started thinking on how he wanted to handle our sins. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So then Jesus became the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice. He was the lamb. His blood was shed. And now every single sin, he nailed it once and for all. All and so there was a change of, of how sin was dealt with. It, there was a change on how salvation was given. And, and I want you to see this because I'm going to take us through a little journey so that you understand this. For example, David talked about his salvation in a very specific way. You know what? Um, in honor of my wife who is not here tonight, I brought some bling on the cup. Okay? <laughs> and uh, and so, so this is what David said. Look at this verse. Check this out. David understood his salvation. It's all going to tie in. What what does this have to do with the way I think? You watch and see. Psalms 116 verse 13 says this. I will lift up. Everybody say lift up. up. See, See, with God, God will always lift up. With God, you will always stand up. Right? With God, you'll always stand out. Right? So David said, I will lift up my what? Of what? So, so in, in the Old Testament time, we understand that the focus was the cup of salvation. So I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. And so in this time, we understand that, that salvation was, was a cup full. It was, just, it, was, it was just enough to handle my sins. A cup full. And David said, I, I lift up my cup to the name of the Lord, and, and he is my Savior, and he is my Redeemer, and I have enough in this cup to just get me by. Are you with me? Okay, so David said, I will lift up the cup of my salvation, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Now check this out. Look at this. Psalms 23, verse 5. Old Testament, right? We're talking Old Testament. I want to I show you how, how the thought process changes and how you and I also need to change how we live and how we do things. God wants to do something new in your life, but so many times we get so stuck in our routine of life. We, we get stuck with the same idea, the same thought. Come on, the same things keep sucking the life out of you. It's been one week. It's been five weeks. It's been six months. It's been four years. You're still stuck on the same thought. No wonder nothing. Nothing has changed because what you focus on continues to expand. Are you listening? And so Psalms 23, David, once again, David says this in verse 5, you prepare a feast for me right in front of my what? Enemies. You pour oil on my what? Head, but my cup what? Runs over. And so David, David said, hey, listen, If David was preaching to Elevate Church today, he would say, hey, guys, here's the deal. In my time, man, it was all about the cup. Salvation was the cup. Man, you you would hope that your cup was running a little bit over because, man, I'm telling you, we, we lift up our cup to our God. We lift up our cup to the name of our Lord. And so I have just enough in this cup to get me through whatever it is I'm going through. And so David understood that there was a cup of salvation. Are you with me? No one's lost yet, right? Stay with me. I will wrap it all up back together. Everybody say a cup of salvation. So this was a cup enough to handle my stuff. 
Now watch this. Then Jesus comes and he says, you know what? I'm here because God wants to change something. God wants us to change the cup mindset and he wants to give us a new way of thinking. Check this out. In John chapter four is the story of the woman at the well. Do you guys remember that story? Okay, so check this out. So now we go from cup to well. Now look at this. John chapter four, verse six through seven, and then nine through 15. Watch this. It says, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus was tired from his journey. And so he sat down by the well. Ever say well. well. And it was about noon and a woman from Samaria came to get some water. And Jesus said to her, hey girl, would you give me some drink? Can you hook a brother up? And the Samaritan woman said to him, man, what's wrong with you? You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for drink? Okay, so service say limitation. So there's, there was a constant limitation. Obviously, here there was a racial issue. There was, uh, there was some stereotyping going on here. You know what? Jews and Samaritans had no dealings with. As a matter of fact, Samaritans really had no religion. They had no religion. And so the way the Jewish, the Jewish people saw them as, as low class, as people that really had no conviction. And, and so what begins to happen is this woman shows up at the well and, and he's asking her, hey, girl, can you give me a drink? And, and then he's, he's like, and she's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, we, we don't have any dealings. And, and, and because your, your Jews don't have anything to do with Samaritans. Next verse, please. And Jesus answered her, girl, you don't even know what God's gift is. You see, I think sometimes we don't even know Eye have, has not seen, ear has not heard <laughs> that God is doing something new right now. Listen, he's like, he's confronting this woman like if you only knew, if you only knew that God wants to change the way you think. See, because you don't see with your eyes, right? You don't see with these lenses, you see with your brain. If you only knew the gift that God's trying to bring you, do you know that it's a gift when God starts changing the way you think? It's a gift. It's a gift. Some of us see it as a curse, like, well, that's who I am. This is, this is, I'm used to, listen, God wants to give you a gift of change. And so he says to her, and you do not know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, girl, man, you would have asked him, and he would have given you what? Okay. If you would have, listen, if you would have just known who it is that's asking you for water, who's asking you for drink, if you would have only known the gift that God wants to give you right now, I'm telling you right now that you would probably change the way you thought. Okay, so next verse. And so she said, sir, the woman said, you don't even have anything to get water with. The well is what? And I'm glad she described it that way. The well is deep. At least she understood that the well was deep. God is deeper than your mess right now. God is deeper than whatever challenge you're facing right now. As a matter of fact, God's well can swallow your ditch that you probably fell in. And so she says, uh, and the well is deep. So where can you get this living water? Our father Jacob gave us the well. He drank from it himself. So did his sons and his livestock. Are you more important than he is? Look at that. And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will what? Be thirsty what? Again, right? Are you guys still with me? Yes. Okay, we'll be thirsty again. But anyone, ever say, but anyone. but anyone. See, the reality is this. Anyone can change here today. Anyone can change. But he says, but anyone who drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty. In fact, those that, that really start drinking the living water, those that start, well, we know that what's, what's, the, what's the, the, the symbolic meaning of water in the Bible? It's the word of God. 
It's the word. And so the more word, the more you focus on the word, it becomes life on the inside of you. And he's saying, hey, listen, but anyone who drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty again. In fact, the water I give them will become a spring of what? Water. When you get the word in you, he springs you up. He will spring up whatever, whatever negative thought you have when you come and you drop from the well of the living water. He will spring up your thoughts and say, you know what, man, I know that's negative. That's stupid. I'm gonna, we're going to get through this. He wants to spring up. God always wants to take us up. God wants to elevate our, li- our life up up God wants to encourage us he wants to bring us up if you came discouraged disappointed God wants to bring you up tonight and so he says he says hey listen it becomes a spring of of water in them it will flow up into eternal life and the woman said to him sir give me this water then I will I will never be thirsty and I won't have to keep coming here to get water listen if you notice in this whole context of story the woman was so focused on her stuck idea of water she was so stuck on the tradition of of the of the man who dug the well drank out of the well so focused on all the problems of this circumstance this moment this 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 conversation she's having that she's overlooking the fact that there is someone greater who is ready and willing to change that that situation in her life and so here you have Jesus who's now talking to her and trying to get her to understand that that when you're trying to focus on problems God is saying or Jesus is saying hey listen I don't think you're realizing that you didn't just come to a well of water because he said anyone who drinks from this well will thirst again the well that he's talking about is that I want to exchange your cup of salvation to a well of salvation I want to change your your cup mindedness into a well mindedness I want to take your cup of of challenges and I want to give you a well of life but haven't you noticed guys haven't you noticed that that as God changes so does the enemy what do you mean how 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 can that be well well, check this out The, the 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 problem is not the problem the problem is how we think here is our problem are you guys ready for the problem Satan, God is changing, shifting, renewing, showing us that he's greater, he's bigger, he's larger, he's awesome, he's magnificent, he's everlasting, he's all these things, right? What the enemy does is that he begins to try to get you and I to think that God is, listen, he can't touch the fact that God's a blessing, but he, but he does get you to think that you have cup blessings versus well blessings, so we're so focused on the cup blessing and thinking that that's enough when Jesus is right there confronting the woman, her ideas, and saying, hey, listen, if you only knew that it's not about the well or the water, it's about the well of blessing I'm trying to get to you. You're coming to me with cup of trials when I'm trying to give you a well of blessings. Are, are you hearing me? And, and so many times, we as, as a church, we as believers, you know what, we're, 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 we're satisfied with just a cup of blessing, but God never said, I give you a cup of blessing. He says, I give you a well of life. It's a life that can, that can heal your, your family. It's life that can heal your marriage. It's life that can heal your children. It's a well of life that can heal your body. It's a well of life that can literally change whatever it is that needs transformation right now. It is that kind of well of blessing. But, but, but the enemy has, has got us so focused on the cup. Touch my cup. Jesus like, no, I, I, I want to exchange it. I, I want to give you a well. Uh, no, no. How are you going to draw from that well anyways? How many of us, God wants to do something supernatural. God wants to do something in you, but you're like, well, I, it's too deep. It's too, how, how is that going to, like right now my problem, like how is that going to happen? And I got I to gotta make sure that I, God's saying, hey, listen, Mauricio, come on. He's like, he's like put it down, <laughs> put it down, put it down, mm, put it, mm, put, 
And how many of us were holding on to, to a cup of, 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 of blessing? And God's like, I'm trying to give you a well of living water that can change not only you, but can change your church, that can change your kids, that can change our youth, that can change our nation. When will you give up your cup? Because I no longer think cup. Yeah, yeah, let, let me prove it to you. Jesus goes so deep that he has to now change and shift the way the church thought. And he said, okay, they're not listening. So we're going to change the cup. And we're going to make now this cup of blessing that they were so comfortable with. And we're going to make it a cup of trials. How? Garden of Gethsemane. He goes to his father, he says, Father, if you can take this cup of suffering, guys, put that on for me. If you, look, Father, if you are willing, take this what? This used to be called a cup of what? Salvation. Jesus says, uh-uh, we're going to change this because I'm the Savior. Uh, you don't have to go and, and sacrifice any lamb anymore. I am your lamb. You don't have to work to, to receive forgiveness. I am your forgiveness. You don't have to work any longer to receive grace. I am grace in your life. When you're weak, I'm strong in you. And so he says, Father, if you are willing, take this what? Cup of suffering away from me, but do what you want, not what I want. Now listen to me. Obviously, did Jesus, did, did God take the cup away from Jesus? No, I think so many times... Our thinking is that we're so focused on the cup of trials and we don't want to deal with this cup of trials, but neither do we want to accept the, the well of blessings either. And so we're just so confused and, and God's saying, hey, listen, Mauricio, here's the reality. I want you just to deal with your cup of trials. Here's why. Look at what the Apostle Paul said. Go with me to, uh, this is a great verse right here. Go with me to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Look at this. Paul, Paul says this. He says, our troubles are what? Small. And, and, so, and so really, when, when you're going through trouble, uh, it's just a cup. But, but Satan has, has completely confused us, and now we think that we have a well of trials and a cup of blessings. When in all reality, we have a well of blessings and only a cup of trials. And so if God did not remove the cup of suffering, neither will he remove it from you. He'll help you through it. He'll strengthen you through it. He'll build character in you through it, but it's not going to be taken away. Don't get so focused on the cup of trials. Get more focused on the well of life. Get more focused on the well of blessings because this is nothing. Listen, you drop this in a well, goodbye. <laughs> We need to immerse ourselves in the well of blessings. And so it says our troubles are small. They last only for a short time. Right now, if you got a, 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 a little cup of trials, it's temporary. <laughs> it's not forever. But, we, but we, we, we embrace it. We drink the poison. We stick with it. We, we, want, we hold on to it. And, and here's the reality. Not realizing that it's really small. Your, your, your challenge, it's, God said, hey, listen. Paul's like, dude. It's small. It's small potatoes. Why are you tripping? You're so focused on, on negative thoughts and you're stressed out and, and you're getting yourself sick physically and, and, and you're, you're literally being sapped of your strength and you're just so focused on what you don't have and what didn't happen and, and what didn't take place. And, and God's saying, why are you so much embracing the cup of trials instead of immersing yourself in the well of blessings? It's the well of life. And so he says, but they're earning for us a glory that will last forever. It is greater than all our troubles. Look at this. You know what happens? <laughs> Let's get back to the woman. Are you guys getting something? This is just a night of encouragement. This is also helping me right now. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself real good right now. Listen. The next time you're in trouble, just say, well. Just say, well. 
Let's all do it together. Count three. One, two, three. Well, yeah. Why? Because it'll remind you that man, this looks like a job for like the well of blessings. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what I said. I said today as I was sitting in my house having another conversation, I'm just like, well. I'm okay with taking the cup of suffering that's small, temporary, knowing that the well of blessing will overcome my troubles. This is temporary. My challenge is temporary. Your challenge is temporary. You're not going to live there. You're not going to stay there. You're not going to. You're not. You're not going to die there. It, it's. It's just momentarily. It's. It's building in you. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that man. It is. It, it brings glory to God. That you know what? It's real soon. I'm going to have another testimony in the name of Jesus. You know what? There's a message that God's going to do out of that. And listen. And even if you right now have done things that have been your mistakes, your your mess ups, God will anoint your mistakes. He will anoint your mess ups so they can become your testimonies. So don't, don't get so focused. Listen, the devil would love you to focus on sin. Focus on the one who forgives you of your sin and let that love that compels you to stop sinning, focus on that. But when you're so focused on sin, guess what? You keep, you keep doing it. Why? Because what you focus on, you're expanding. Focus on the one who forgave you of your sins. Focus on the one who has graced you and said, Mauricio, he, you know, Gus, I, I love you. I, I, I forgive you. And you know what that does? That love compels you. Like, I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to go there anymore. Uh, he loves you. He's been so good to me, man. You start focusing on the goodness of God. You don't want that anymore. You just want him. You want his plan. Man, you want to hang out with Jesus. Look what happens to this woman. Let's go back to her real quickly. Look what happens. Are you guys, you guys there? Look at, uh, go to, uh, I love this. Look at this, John 4, 28. Look at this. So, so the woman is having all this conversation back and forth, right? She's got her little cup, right? She went there, and she's having this conversation, and Jesus is like, okay, hey, come on, let's trade, let's trade. And so she finally got it. She finally had a shift in the way she was thinking, and then she said this. The woman left her what? Her cup. She left her cup, and she went back to town, and she said to the people, and we know what she said to the people. She went and was like, man, this everything I've ever done, and we know that this woman had some issues. Man, she didn't have one husband. She had five husbands, you know, and she was taking other people's husbands. You know, this woman, but, but guess what? But love confronted her. You see, so many times we want to confront people with judgment, but Jesus does not want to judge you. He wants to convict you so that there can be repentance, and repentance brings change. That's all repentance is. It's to change the way you think about the sin that you've been committing. Jesus showed up and said, let's address this in love. So whatever condemnation, guilt, shame that you've been carrying, that's not Jesus. That's not God. God's saying, hey, listen, why don't you give me that cup and let me give you a well of living water. She left it all. We need to, leave our, we need to start leaving our cup thinking behind and we need to start embracing the well blessing mind and realize that my God is bigger than whatever I'm facing right now. He's bigger. He's greater. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.